Yes, hi again. It's me, Mikhail Kachin, and today um, our lesson will be still regarding strategy playing, position of playing. And my next game uh, will be against uh, one of the most creative and uh, underrated international masters in the U.S., Emily Tate, who I have very big respect because the guy is really, really, very creative and really, really talented. So uh, we met we met many many times and uh, our last meeting was in um, in the San Francisco area in Concord we played at Golden State Open and we had a very tough battle a very tough battle uh, refusing the draws uh, and at the end we have very nice end game so uh, this is the position as you see on the screen so I had the black pieces. Um, uh, obviously, uh, if you take a look, I could simply defend uh, by holding the file, uh, probably trade a few pieces because white has no entrances. But um, I still be hoping about to play for win since I thought uh, Bishop only two in a very bad shape and he's surrounded by his own pawns. And uh, one of the ways uh, how to play this kind of positions it's actually. Uh, simplifying the position, try to take the game to end game, and simply uh, leave the bishop on e2 just uh, by himself. Uh, let's say bishop on e2 versus my bishop on g8, for instance. Um, this was one of the possible pictures how I should uh, play my game. So I figured out that, and I went here, rook h6. Um, um, well, I'm trying to create some imbalance still, trying to jump on h4 attacking side, maybe creating some targets uh, by calling h3 move and then uh, hoping maybe to get, get uh, bishop e6 and then sacrifice on h3. That was a picture uh, of, of, my, of my mind. So uh, rook h6, bishop f1, queen h4. Again, all these moves are uh, pretty much understandable. h3. That's the first moment uh, of big thoughts. So I had a cho two choices here. I thought I was trying to pick between knight e6 and uh, rook g6. So knight e6 sounds good because I will keep my knight alive and I might have some ideas to jump either on g g5 or jump on d4. But the problem is uh, white has rook d7 and immediately bother me because uh, after rook d7, his rook are looking for my a7 pawn, uh, his bishop has access to jump on e7. So I wasn't really sure um, if I had to do that because it seems like uh, white has um, activity a lot and uh, by doubling eventually rook on, by, on d file, I would have a problem also with my back rank. So I thought, no, I don't, I don't have to do that because uh, I need to protect um, uh, d7 square. And I went here. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.